Red Bull has met its first obstacle of the season with Ferrari, even though it was tackled with perfection by the Austrian team. But it seems like Monza won't be the only GP in which Ferrari is going to present a threat to the 15 race winning streak of the Austrian team. What is even more worrying for Red Bull is that the Maranello team will be joined by Mercedes and Aston Martin in the quest to tackle Verstappen, and the characteristics of Singapore make it so much more favourable now than ever for another team to win the race. Could this be what we've been waiting for for so long? Another driver winning a race in 2023? And is Red Bull legitimately threatening to lose one of the most legendary winning streaks in the history of the sport? The Singapore Grand Prix is a track on which many teams fail to keep their consistency, mostly because of its characteristics, a high downforce track full of 90 degree corners. If we're to look at history, there aren't many drivers who have won this track more than twice in their career, with Hamilton being the last one to do so in 2017 and 2018. Last year, it was Perez who emerged victorious, but the amount of pressure he was having from Leclerc was not to be underestimated, especially after what we saw Ferrari was capable of on high downforce circuits like Singapore. In the past, we've seen Ferrari be very dominant in Baku, yet another circuit that's very similar to Singapore, and the only reason why they lost this race was because of the long straight that the Baku GP has. Unlike that one, Singapore offers little to no opportunities for overtakes, and it doesn't have what Red Bull excels at, long main straights. Therefore, a bad qualifying session is all it takes for Verstappen and Red Bull's winning streak to end, and quite frankly, that isn't too far-fetched of a scenario to happen. A team that's emerged as one of the strongest candidates to fight with Red Bull in Singapore is Aston Martin, and this has been speculated a long time ago, when the Silverstone-based team announced that they are very likely to bring a new front wing for this track in order to make up for all the lost time. Truth be told, Aston Martin has been in a decent slump of performance recently, but tracks like Singapore happen every once in a while, and we must never forget the monster qualifying lap of Alonso in Monaco for P2 and how he managed to keep that position during the race. But ever since then, Aston Martin has struggled to find more performance on the AMR23, and many, including the team principal Mike Crack and their superstar driver Fernando Alonso, have labelled the Singapore Grand Prix as their greatest chance to bring home the number 33 win for the two-time world champion. I guess that it's not a very hard thing to wish for, especially after the fact that all Alonso needs in moments like this is a strong qualifying lap, which will be further enhanced by the front wing that the team has in store for him. It's worth noting that the front wing that Aston Martin brought in Baku was deemed illegal by the FIA, and after this intervention, the team announced that they would bring a new version of it to Singapore. Tracks with high downforce can take a huge toll on the wing flexibility, something that the FIA had a huge issue with in Baku, and something that Aston Martin is very likely fixed for the remainder of the season with the latest upgrade in Singapore. Even Fernando Alonso stated that in the second half of the season, he expects to be fighting the Red Bulls much closer. And while that hasn't been the scenario lately, Singapore is bound to change this thanks to the characteristics of the track. But Aston Martin, as I already mentioned earlier, is definitely not the only team that would be hungry to break the streak of Red Bull, as their old nemesis has something in store as well. Mercedes, although are very unlikely to bring a huge upgrade package or any package at all to Singapore, are lurking in the shadows for one spectacular reason – their speed during the low-speed corners. If we were to look at these graphs from this year's Silverstone and Budapest Grand Prix, we'd notice that Mercedes is one of the fastest teams when it comes to slow corners, which are the ones that require the most downforce from the car. Of course, the tracks are not very similar to compare, especially given the fact that the Budapest Grand Prix is a much slower and narrower track compared to Silverstone. But luckily for Mercedes, it resembles the Singapore Grand Prix much more than it does the British Grand Prix, which should enable the W14 to manoeuvre better in the low-speed corners and keep Red Bull at bay. One of the main issues that Mercedes might have had was that they were not the fastest team out there when it comes to straight-line speed, but there is a hidden gem behind this flaw. The Singapore Grand Prix is not about speed, it's about manoeuvrability. This is one of Hamilton's favourite tracks, and we must never forget the monster lap he did back in 2018, when he set a benchmark on how a team should act and behave on track with a car that was able to break every limit of the sport. This will be a circuit that would require massive knowledge from the drivers, and that's something that Hamilton has in extension compared to the rest of the grid. So, with a little bit of luck and a little help from their team, Hamilton and Russell will definitely be in contention for the win in Singapore, as they would have to bring their elbows out in qualifying. And yet again, Ferrari are likely the biggest threat that Red Bull could possibly have on their hands. 
mostly because they're the team that actually has proven to take something away from them this season, even though it means little to nothing when it comes to the dominance of the Austrian team. Leclerc is one of the three drivers that have sat on the pole position apart from Red Bull's drivers, with the other one being his teammate Sainz and the third one being Hamilton. And Sainz has been the only driver not named Sergio Perez who managed to keep Verstappen at bay for more than 10 laps, 13 in total in Monza. Now, the Maranello team excels at tracks like this, and that was visible during last year's race as well. Truth be told, Leclerc could have done a little bit better considering that Perez had a 5 second penalty and he managed to pull ahead of the Monegasque in the last laps of the race. But this year, the cards are shuffled differently, and it's Ferrari who holds the upper hand. When it comes to high downforce circuits like Baku, Leclerc has been able to make a massive difference compared to Red Bulls in the high downforce sectors, more precisely at the 90 degree corners. It was mostly the DRS advantage that kept the RB19 ahead of the SF23, something that then allowed the Austrian team to take yet another dominant 1-2 win. But with little to no space for overtaking, as well as a bumpy surface that would make the hard overtaking process even harder, all Ferrari needs is a strong qualifying lap, one that might not be that hard to achieve considering how well they did in Baku and Monza. For the first time in quite some time, more precisely after Monaco, the long-term speed won't matter as much as the qualifying position. And if Ferrari manages to qualify and pole and then keep it that way for the first couple of laps, then I guess Red Bull could wave goodbye to their winning streak. And while we're waving goodbyes, we must not forget the latest team that learned how to properly build a car within the new regulations. Motivated by Red Bull, but iterating the rules in their own way. McLaren the Woking-based squad has also taken a recent slump in performance after some strong showings in Silverstone and Budapest, but they are looking to bounce back in Singapore as they are one of the few teams that are going to bring upgrades to this track. Andreas Stella has spoken about the next goal of the Papaya team as he went on to elaborate, We have a deficit at high speeds and we are already working to resolve it as much as possible on this car and then eliminate it on the next one. We want to push towards Singapore where we'll bring some new parts. McLaren believes that Ferrari, although favoured by the high downforce characteristics of this track, will struggle to be competitive, and apart from Red Bull, who is the obvious favourite to win it all here, the most competition they'll find would be in Mercedes and Aston Martin. The misleading simulator data has taken its toll on the UK-based teams, but now it seems like they're slowly but surely pushing themselves back in the right direction. And truth be told, this is exactly what we need for an interesting finish to the F1 season. There's always the competitive factor in Red Bull that can mess up their race for them, as we know that Perez and Verstappen are not the best of buddies after the 2022 Sao Paulo GP and how everything started to unfold in the 2023 campaign. And considering how good Perez is on street circuits, I very much doubt he'll obey any team commands that would allow his teammate to get past him. But the good news for him and Verstappen is that Red Bull plans to bring a small upgrade to Singapore, which would basically be the last one before they fully focus on the RB20. So, if he wants a chance to prove that he's worth something for the Austrian team, this would be it. The ball is in the other team's court, and they've never had a better chance of ending a race winning streak than now. Red Bull are very unlikely to struggle with reliability issues or with performance, but considering how the track conditions change, strategy as well as qualifying will be the two most important factors that Ferrari, Aston Martin, McLaren and Mercedes will have to watch out for if they want to emerge victorious for the first time in the last 15 races.